And you welcome back. A senior customs officer and an administrator at the office of the vice president have pleaded not guilty to the charge of failing to comply with a lawful demand uh, of an authorized officer. A staff of the National Insurance Commission, Isa Seidu, who had attempted to clear goods while claiming to be acting on the authority of the vice president's office, also pleaded not guilty to the charge. Court correspondent Joseph Akable was there and now reports. The four accused persons are Issa Seydou, who works with the National Insurance Commission, James Kek Osei, an administrator at the office of the Vice President, and John Aban and Peter Achibod Hyde, who are custom officers. They have been slapped their charge of failing to comply with a lawful demand of an authorized officer. The special prosecutor received a complaint by a businessman who had imported rice into the country. The concern is that another person, that is the first accused person, Issa Seydou, had tried to also clear the same goods. The special prosecutor, while investigating the matter, gave these individuals a form to fill indicating their income and properties they own. They failed to do so, resulting in charges being filed against them. The businessman claims that GRE investigated the matter and asked that the goods be released to him. While trying to get the goods cleared, he was told the first accused person had also come to claim ownership of the same goods. He later found out through documents he came across that the office of the vice president of Ghana had asked that the GRE releases the goods to the first accused because they were to be used for Ramadan celebrations. The administrator at the office of the vice president was granted self-recognizance bail, while the two other accused persons who were present were granted bail in the sum of 10,000 cities with one surety. Okay, uh, at this point, I want to hear from Adam Senano, who is co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against uh, Corruption. Adam, thank you for your time here on the poll. So, uh, quite some shocking revelations there from the courts. But what, what's, I mean, on the whole, what, what does this suggest to you uh, about the country's um, corruption situation? Well, first of all, I think we should commend the Office of the Special Prosecutor but this very landmark action. I mean, we've talked about lifestyle audits without executing this in the past. And we might probably lose sight of how important this is to our country uh, if you don't recognize that this is, this is a watershed moment that individuals have been asked to explain their sources of income uh, and how they've generated the monies that they've amassed and they are using. Uh, I think that it's important to commend the office and to keep a close eye on how this you know, proceeds in, in the courts. So yes, I think it's important. And I think that uh, if the office were supported to do much more of this, it will play a very strong role as a deterrent uh, in making other persons mindful of being cautious about their sources of income and how they spend this money. The fear is we're entering a landmine. The fact that, of course, the auditor, uh, the office of the special prosecutor, uh, by extension, the special prosecutor himself, could get up and carry out a lifestyle audit on someone on mere suspicion. Um, are there legal remedies? I mean, within the frameworks of the law itself, uh, checking this power of the, uh, I mean, special prosecutor. Well, but of course, a, a blessing. I mean, I don't think they would ever do this on mere speculation. Mm. The law puts in place a framework which will make sure that this is not arbitrary. There will be indicators. Uh, and remember that these individuals were first asked formally to explain their sources of income. So you have the opportunity to write and say, uh, I work, I work at the office of the vice president. This is how much I earn. I do such and such businesses legally um, registered and able to provide this amount of resources in a month. Uh, combine that with uh, uh, whatever my wife is doing. Mm. These are the sources of income that have contributed to A, B, and C. It is only when they fail to respond to that request to explain their sources of income that the uh, special prosecutor has gone to the next level. Don't forget that in court, you still have the opportunity to provide the evidence that would make the case that, look, there is nothing untoward happening or not. So I don't think that the special prosecutor is going to go through the whole process of getting to court, raising issues on individuals and cases that he knows he will, yeah. uh, will not fly. It will go against his own integrity entertained in any way or form. Uh, but Adam, how about, uh, you know, this whole 
issues surrounding, for instance, um, how, for instance, the the uh, odd, uh, I mean the special prosecutor could go for higher profiled individuals. That the feeling here is that we're just going quote unquote after the low hanging fruits. So yeah, it's easy to do that to them, but not the high profiled political uh, class and politically exposed persons that the office of the special should be a special prosecutor should be going after. Well, I will not um, uh, what, criticize the, the OSP mm -hmm. if there are low-hanging fruits that the office can go after. Because, mind you, uh, you need re resources and adequate ones, uh, financially, human, and otherwise, to go to prosecute and investigation and follow up. If there are low-hanging fruits that allow you to get rid of, uh, in the context of uh, a lack of adequate resources, uh, it will make sense to do just that. And as you get more resources, uh, both financial, human logistics, you can then look at the much bigger cases that probably will travel longer distances and require a lot more focus and, uh, as it were, the assignment of minimal officers uh, to get into. So, Let's rather be clamoring that the office gets additional resources so that it can have multiple cases that they are looking at. And then we can begin to push them on the issue of uh, high profile cases. In any case, whichever cases they take up ought to have been assessed to the extent that they know that look, these are things that we can take through the legal process and get uh, a ruling on one that is clearly demonstrating that we pick the right cases and we are demonstrating that we are not going to tolerate any forms of corruption that fall under our mandate. Mm. You, you have some, some areas or offices in mind for a lifestyle audit? Uh, not really. I think, obviously, like you said, we'd like to start from the top. So perhaps you want to start with the presidency, the office of government machinery, um, and then people at that level, so that they know that nobody can hide. You can hide, but you're not going to run forever. And on a lighter note, let me point out that equally historic is the fact that in one case, uh, the Office of Special Prosecutor appears to have indicted Peter, James, John, and Isa, who is Jesus, in one single case. Take a look at the names again. Interesting. Peter, James, John. <laughs> and, uh, James, John, and Isa, who is Jesus in Islam, all in one case. <laughs> That's an interesting one. I wasn't paying attention to that. Uh, but and, um, of course, we'll see you when you get back. Thank you for joining us here on the polls. See you again. Thank you. And well, thank you for having me. Uh, now.